Immigrants march while a city stands still. Organizers warn today's rallies and boycotts will paralyze Los Angeles. CNN's Jen Rogers is there. Jen? Well, Kara, right now where we are, it is not paralyzed at this point. We're at City Hall, but nine blocks away from here, it is a completely different story, and that is the starting point for the protest that is supposed to end here in just a few hours. Uh, down at the starting point, uh, we have uh, seen uh, people in the white shirts that they've been requested to wear, uh, waving flags. We're seeing them stream through the downtown streets here, heading to that starting point. The organizers of this march and this protesters uh, were also behind the um, uh, protest at the end of March. They had about 500,000 protesters then. Uh, they say that they are expecting that number again, maybe even a number above that. The organizers are calling for immigrants to boycott work, to boycott school, and not to buy anything today. Uh, some of the people that I've talked to on their way down to the starting point say that they are following those rules so far. Uh, there is another march, though, that is expected to possibly be even bigger, and that is because it is at 4 p.m. today, and those organizers are not calling for a boycott of work or school. Uh, the uh, mayor uh, has asked for people to stay in school and go to the second march instead. Uh, that one starting at 4 p.m. local time. Again, some people expecting for that one to be even bigger than the crowd we are expecting to see here shortly. Kara? What more has the mayor said? He's supporting one but not another. You know, he is here at City Hall, we are told by a press aide. He will be monitoring the events of the one here at City Hall in terms of public safety and traffic. But he has really said stay in school, that that is a big issue for him. He came out on that during the last round of protests as well. Uh, the mayor actually has on his schedule to be in Dallas this evening for an NFL owners meeting trying to get professional football back here in Los Angeles. He has supported uh, immigrant rights in the past. Uh, but again, not planning on making an appearance at the City Hall rally. Possibly, we are told, uh, he could be on the docket for the afternoon rally, but that is not a sure bet either. Kara? All right, Jen Rogers, thanks so much. Well, the wave heads west. It's lunchtime in California and go time for a monumental rally for immigrant rights. Seen as Jen Rogers once again live in Los Angeles. Jen? Well, Kara, the crowds keep coming here to City Hall. That is one thing for sure. Uh, we have seen uh, definitely tens of thousands of people. We do not have exact crowd estimates at all by now, but organizers were hoping to at least match the 500,000 figure that they had back in March. Now, the organizers for this protest, which is just one of two major protests that are going on in Los Angeles today, have called for a boycott of work, of school, and of buying anything, really to flex the immigrant muscle to show how important they are to the the economy. Now, one person that is following that boycott is Giovanna Gomez. She actually is not going to school today. Tell me why you decided to come here today. I think it's really important to show how much we contribute to the economy. It's very, very important because um, it was just how badly we really affect it, and we need to show that to everybody, to politicians, <laughs> we need to show it. Now, you marched the nine blocks up here to City Hall. What was it like in the crowd? Has it been peaceful? What are people saying? It's very peaceful, and I thought it was pretty amazing. I actually got chills at one point, just seeing how united everybody came here, like how they got. And it's just pretty amazing. It was very, very peaceful. Everyone's just supporting, and it's great. It's been great. Do you think it's going to make any difference? I am hoping. I think. I think we could show, we think it's going to make an impact just to show, you know, if hopefully enough people do actually boycott. I think that's very important for us to boycott, not to buy absolutely anything, you know, not going to school, not selling anything. I think that shows how united we are and it shows how much we're really contributing. I think it shows. I'm hoping, I honestly don't know if it'll get to them. I don't know if it will make a difference, but I'm hoping and that's why we're here to try. Okay. Now, the mayor, whose office is right here in this building, has said to students to stay in school today, to go to the later protest. Um, are you afraid you're going to get in trouble at all? Is this, is this a, something you're worried about? No, not really. I thought it was important to miss school. You know, the, it's the same thing. It's a boycott. You're, you're boycotting. We're making them this money. Not that I'm wanting to necessarily, but I think it's very important we're going to show. So, no, I'm not worried. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your talking to us, Kira. That is just one voice from the many that are coming here to City Hall in Los Angeles. Kira? Jen Rogers, thanks so much. Straight to Tony Harris. Now he's. Let's get straight to Tony Harris. Uh, working actually yep. right, right, right off this subject. Right matter. off this subject. Yeah, absolutely, Kira. Julie Rodriguez is with us, and she's with the United Farm Workers Union. She's involved in the protest in Los Angeles. Julie, are you there?
Yes, I'm here. Julia, uh, uh, first of all, did you ask um, did you ask workers within your union not to work today? Well, no, we wanted to respect the workers themselves and ensure that they weren't jeopardizing their um, own position and own status at the company. But as I think was previously mentioned on this um, on this newscast, that across the state of California, the fresh fruit and vegetable harvest has come to a halt. It's literally shut down today from the strawberry and lettuce fields in the Salinas Valley all the way to the table grapes and carrot industries in the Central Valley and to, of course, the luscious wine grapes up in Sonoma County. Work has come to a halt because um, the farm workers are, are in solidarity with today's actions and in demonstrating justice for immigrants. Uh, the members of, of your union, are, are we talking about all uh, legal uh, citizens? Legal? Are we talking about a mix of uh, folks who are here legally and illegally? There is a mixture of both documented and undocumented workers that work in um, the agricultural industry. And today, you know, tens of thousands of farm workers aren't working today, um, and instead they're joining in nonviolent marches and vigils and uh, rallies organized by the United Farm Workers across the state of California. And so um, I think that, you know, those that are undocumented obviously see the impact directly of legislation that's currently before us. And those that are do have their documentation are working in solidarity because they understand the um, the difficulties and um, some of the you sure. know hardships of um, undocumented workers. So, Julie, what is the position of the union with respect to undocumented workers? Well, the union believes that if farm workers are here and they're working in our fields, that they deserve basic human rights, they deserve basic um, labor rights and legal rights, and so that's our position on um, undocumented workers, is that if they're working in our fields, then they deserve to be protected like any other worker, like any other human being. Isn't there, isn't there sort of by definition then a natural split within the union when, when you're talking about those who are here uh, legally and those who are here undocumented, as you put it? Um, no, actually, you know, as the UFW has for years, it's fought for issues that the workers are concerned about, issues like education, like health care, like pension plans, like higher wages. Those are the rallying points for our workers. Um, it's really about the workplace issues because all of them are working together. You know, they're working in the same field. They're working side by side one another. And they believe that they deserve, you know, better, more fair, more just treatment. And so that's really where our issues lie. Couldn't, couldn't your, couldn't your legal uh, migrants and, and immigrants, couldn't your legal immigrants get a higher wage if they weren't in competition with those who are here uh, illegally? Well, I think that, you know, unfortunately folks have uh, claimed that undocumented workers and, and undocumented uh, immigrants are driving wages down. And I think that, you know, I think that there are other factors at play. Um, when the agricultural industry is willing to pay workers uh, no more than, uh, you know, what they feel like they can to make a certain profit, then they're willing to do that at any cost. And so I think, unfortunately, as, as oftentimes is the case, we're blaming the victim here um, rather than really looking at enforcement and that ensuring that our workers are treated with dignity and with, with, with respect. They're contributing a tremendous amount, not just here in California, to the Californian economy, but throughout the country. And I think today is witness of really the impact and, um, and the, uh, the power of immigrants. Oh, so much more to say, so much more to, to ask you, Julie. But thanks for your time. Uh, Julie Rodriguez with the United Farm Workers Union, who was involved in the demonstration in Los Angeles, Kira. All right. <laughs> Tony Harris, thank you so sure. much. Thanks so much. You know, immigrant rights activism is a family tradition for my next guest. Christine Chavez is the granddaughter of legendary labor leader Cesar Chavez. She's also running for the seat in the California Assembly. This is the second time she, we've had the chance to have her on the show. Christine, it's great to have you back. Thank you. No, thank you for inviting me back. You have been uh, funneling in information uh, to us. Actually, uh, I've been using it within the past hour, uh, coming from uh, the United Farm Workers Union. Tell me where you have been today and what you've been tracking with regard to these farmers uh, and how it's affecting the agriculture uh, industry uh, up to this point. Yeah, we got reports from a number of our field offices all the way down as far as the Imperial Valley, which borders uh, Mexico. 
and then all the way up to the Napa vineyards. We are hearing, we're getting reports that in the um, fruit and vegetables, um, the workers have walked out and have joined the United Farm Workers at massive protests. And so as we know it, uh, you know, the agricultural in this state has come to a halt. There are nobody picking fruits and vegetables right now. So what do you think about what is taking place today? Is this the way to go? Is, is, should it be done through a boycott? Should it be done through not showing up to work, not going to school, uh, and, and making these types of efforts? Well, I was just at, you know, I live in East Los Angeles and driving through the community of East Los Angeles this morning, there was businesses shut, even a jack-in-the-box said, due to staffing problems, we are closed today. And then we joined the city of Maywood out in the southeast area of Los Angeles with thousands and thousands of people from all the southeast areas coming together. And I, it was so inspiring to see people marching just the way that uh, Dr. King and Cesar Chavez to marching nonviolently for one single a common cause. It's very inspiring. You saw mothers there with their, with their small children. You saw, you know, hundreds of just thousands of people out there marching all for the same cause. Let me, you know, we've been getting a lot of emails, uh, Christine, uh, a lot of angry emails. Uh, one coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. Melfina said, my aunt has been waiting for almost 11 years to become an immigrant legally. These protesters think they can become legal by abandoning their jobs, endangering our economy, and insulting the hardworking middle class. What do you think about these people that are extremely angry about what uh, the illegal immigrants and the immigrants are doing today? Well, we were, we're also extremely upset about bills like H.R. 4437 that look to penalize, you know, people who are just here to work. And so one of the, one of the things we've done at the United Farm Workers is we're trying to put farm workers on a path towards earned legalization. You have to remember that farm workers, are, they feed this nation. And it is important for them to come out of the shadows and be a part of society. And this is one day where we're all getting together saying enough is enough. We would like to have earned legalization. What do you think your grandfather would think of all this? I know that growing up, the only way that you really had a chance to spend time with your grandfather was to go to the protests and be a part of these uh, protests with him. Um, as he looks down on what's happening today, what do, you, what, what do you think that he would say? He would be so proud. And there's a quote that he used to say. He used to say, we don't need perfect political systems, but we need perfect participation. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Whether people cho chose to boycott or chose to go to work, because there was some people that could not do that. And everybody has to respect that also. But we, we're asking people to come and participate after work and just to have a day of action. You know, educate your neighbors about it. If you're in school, educate other, other students about that. But really talk about, about HR 4437 and speak out against that. So I think my grandfather would be on the forefront on all, of all of these activities and, would, and is very proud to see everybody marching just the way he did nonviolently. Well, Christine, what do you think about uh, President Vicente Fox and, and what's happening in Mexico? And we're focusing so much on the protests here, but what about uh, the corruption in Mexico? What about uh, making life better uh, for the men and women there? So this isn't so much of an issue. No, they're. No, there definitely needs to be, you know, some changes in Mexico. But right now, what we're focused on are the people that are working here in this country and making sure that they're given all the opportunities that everybody else has in, in the United States. And I think that with these marches and these protests, we're definitely going to see a broken immigration system be put in, in the forefront of, of, you know, of everybody's living rooms. And everybody's going to continue to talk about this issue until we see this system um, work. Christine Chavez, always good to talk to you. Appreciate you joining us again today. Thank you. Well, they were enemies in Iraq. In the so-called day without immigrants uh, protests uh, here in the United States today, many demonstrators marched through the streets of Los Angeles to their city hall. Joining us now is the mayor of L.A., Antonio Villaraigosa. Mr. Mayor, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, was this a good idea to organize these demonstrations and these boycotts today? What I've said is uh, on that issue is uh, that participating in a boycott uh, is a personal decision. I didn't uh, oppose or uh, argue for uh, a boycott. And either way, what I did say was that I want kids to stay in school. Uh, we know that uh, many have stayed in school, but some are participating in today's march. I also said that uh, there would be an opportunity later on in the day uh, to, for young people to march, and we're hoping that that's what they'll do. You know, it's hard to tell. I can only say this, uh, that these marches that the tens of thousands of people and we don't have an exact estimate but we know that it's going to be a very very large de demonstration we understand maybe the largest in the nation uh, what's clear 
is they're peaceful. What's peer, uh, clear is that they're celebratory in their mood, uh, their families, uh, children, grandparents. Uh, it's a very positive environment. Uh, I, of course, have spent most of my time with, with the Emergency Operations Center to ensure that we're managing uh, this number of people, although we expect it to continue to be peaceful. Uh, there's a, obviously a lot of things that could happen when you have so many people concentrated uh, in such a small area. Mr. Mr. Mayor, has there been any, uh, any problems yet, any, dem any demonstrations getting violent, any incidents? No. In fact, we just had an update about an hour and a half ago of our emergency operations center. Uh, it was reported that there have been no incidents, no arrests, uh, no uh, one injury, somebody tripped uh, while walking. Uh, other than that, uh, things have been very, very peaceful, very positive. And I'm happy to say uh, that the vast majority of people have American flags, uh, as they should, uh, and uh, that uh, people are very, very positive about the American dream. Should they not carry Mexican flags? Well, I've said from the beginning, look, uh, we live here in the United States of America. I was born and raised here. Uh, if you want to be part of this nation, uh, an American flag uh, is appropriate. Uh, and, you know, the other uh, flags that people may fly are certainly uh, an indication of their, uh, you know, yearning for the old country. But, uh, uh, you know, it's important for us to demonstrate uh, that we want to be part of the American dream. What did you think of this controversy that erupted in recent days over the translation of the Star Spangled Banner into Spanish? Uh, what, what was your take on that? Wolf, let me just say to you, uh, let me make it absolutely clear, I was offended. Uh, I was offended because uh, for me, uh, the national anthem uh, is something that uh, I believe deserves respect. Uh, and uh, I think that the, without question, that the vast majority of people in the United States of America were uh, offended as well. Uh, we want, uh, you know, this, our anthem should be sung in English. Uh, the Spanish uh, and Mexican anthems should be sung in Spanish. Uh, the French an anthem in, fr in French. Uh, so I was offended by it, and I think most people were. Uh, and remember, very few people uh, bought into that. Uh, it really was a non-issue, but it, I think it was important to dismiss it as quickly as possible. A lot of us were concerned when we heard last week, Mr. Mayor, that there had been death threats against you and the Lieutenant Governor of California, Cruz Bustamante. Uh, where does that stand right now? Is it indicative of a bigger problem that has erupted here, growing out of this whole battle over immigration reform? I hope not. And first of all, let me make something absolutely clear, Wolf. Uh, the FBI looked into that uh, threat. There's nothing to it. Uh, there have been others in the past, I'll admit, but uh, uh, I can tell you this, uh, that with a job of mayor or a governor, you're going to get uh, that kind of thing from time to time. Uh, I don't let it uh, bother me. I have a great security team that's with me uh, at all times. I can tell you this, uh, my uh, belief is that you, you call them like you see them, uh, you stand by your convictions and your principles, and, you know, if people disagree with that, uh, so be it. Uh, Republican Congressman Dana Rohrabacher of California, your neighbor out in Orange County, uh, he said this uh, not that long ago. He said, over the years, it's been evident that the Democrats exploit illegal immigrants for political reasons. Granting amnesty will only serve to draw more illegal aliens to our country and add to the burden placed on our public school system, health care system, and criminal justice system. Uh, on the specific issue of amnesty, a lot of the uh, protesters today want amnesty for the 10, 12 uh, million illegal immigrants in this country. Where do you stand on the issue of allowing these people to live here legally and eventually become citizens? First, let me just say that Dana Rohrabacher is a friend of mine. Uh, I have uh, a lot of respect for him. We don't agree uh, on every issue. In fact, we uh, don't often agree on uh, many issues, but uh, he's a good person. I disagree with that idea, though. Uh, I th I, uh, where the idea that somehow all of these people uh, are asking for amnesty. What they're asking for uh, is a, a fair and sensible bipartisan uh, immigration reform that secures our borders, uh, that enforces our laws, that holds people uh, accountable for the consequences of breaking the law by fining them, uh, that says that employer sanctions should be levied on employers who hire uh, the undocumented, but that there should also be a pathway for citizenship uh, if you play by the rules uh, and pay your taxes and have not gotten involved with the law. So, you know, look, 
uh, people are going to say what they're going to say. Unfortunately, some uh, like to polarize. I don't think that's something endemic to any party. I think, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of demagogues out there, and they like whipping it up. The mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Villaraigosa, I know it's been a busy day for you. Thanks for spending a few moments here in the Situation Room. Thank you, Wolf. And let's get another perspective. Ian, Los Angeles, Chris Lawrence is there. Chris? Well, Wolf, hundreds of thousands of people continue to march through the streets of Los Angeles right now, chanting, uh, Unidos estamos and si se puede, uh, united we stand, we can do it. Uh, and, and what we're seeing now is some of the organizers starting to say they're going to look beyond today's 